The launch of GPT-5 has quickly become one of the most talked about, and perhaps one of the most controversial, events in the world of artificial intelligence in recent memory. Some users have called the model a disappointment, while others see it as a major step forward. But nearly everyone agrees on one thing. Expectations were sky high, and the presentation itself left more questions than answers. In the first hours after GPT-5 went live, social media and online forums filled with hundreds of complaints and screenshots showing user frustration. People said the answers had become noticeably shorter, losing the color and warmth that once made conversations feel more like talking to a real person. Many noted that the familiar sense of support was gone. GPT-5 no longer picks up on a user's ideas, offers encouragement, or steers the conversation in interesting directions the way earlier versions did. Instead, the model now delivers facts or solutions in a way that feels more like reporting to a boss than chatting with a human. This shift was especially jarring for those who had been using ChatGPT as a daily companion or even as a form of emotional support. On Reddit and Twitter, comments like GPT-4 was my friendly companion, but GPT-5 is just a smart yet indifferent consultant became common. Some even joke that the new model must have taken a course in emotional coldness. Part of the disappointment isn't about the model's intelligence itself, but rather a technical failure. OpenAI designed GPT-5 to be a universal tool that would decide on its own whether to answer instantly or take extra time for deeper reasoning. This was handled by an automatic router, a system that directs each query to the appropriate version of the model, the faster, lighter one, or the slower, more capable reasoning mode. However, on launch day, that system malfunctioned. OpenAI later admitted that the router was partially down meaning a significant number of users, including paid subscribers, weren't actually getting the top version of GPT-5, but a more stripped-down one. This didn't mean the model had suddenly gotten dumber, but complex prompts were being processed in a mode not intended for deep reasoning, creating the impression of a dumbed-down system and lower quality overall. Another factor made things worse. To optimize costs, OpenAI reallocated resources across its plans, removing older, more expensive models like GPT-4 from the free tier and replacing them with GPT-5 in an economy mode. According to some users, even paid queries were sometimes routed through cost-optimized versions rather than the highest-performing setup. The result was a GPT-5 that was intelligent but toned down delivering factually correct answers that felt less rich and less human. These changes were especially noticeable to those who relied on AI for creative work or emotionally engaging conversations. In professional tasks like coding or data analysis, GPT-5 performed well enough, but in everyday chat, its new style felt colder and more detached to many. And that, according to a large number of commentators, is what dealt the biggest blow to the launch's reputation. The replacement of previous versions with GPT-5 in economy mode came as an unpleasant surprise for many users. Those who had spent months working with GPT-4 or its improved iterations suddenly found that their familiar conversational partner was gone, replaced by a new one, more pragmatic but lacking that elusive spark in dialogue. For part of the audience, it felt like a step backward towards soulless corporate chatbots. The model could still deliver accurate facts, but it no longer brightened its answers with jokes, empathy, or casual commentary. The change hit especially hard for users who weren't writing code or analyzing complex data sets, but instead used ChatGPT for friendly conversations, creative inspiration, or practicing foreign languages in a natural, interactive way. For them, the loss of a friendly tone and emotional responsiveness was a real blow. Forums and social media quickly filled with identical pleas, bring back GPT-4, and at least let us have the old version on a paid plan. Many commentators began speculating on why OpenAI made this move. The leading theory was cost optimization. GPT-4 and its intermediate versions, like 4.0 and 4.1, were expensive to maintain, especially for free tier users. By replacing them with GPT-5, equipped with adaptive routing, where the system automatically selects the cheaper response option, OpenAI was able to reduce server load and cut expenses.
But along with that came a loss of conversational expressiveness, which for many users was more valuable than gains in logic or factual accuracy. This shift came at the exact moment when OpenAI's competitors were stepping up their game. Google with its Gemini model, Anthropic with Claude, and XAI with Grok, all took advantage of user dissatisfaction. On prediction markets like Polymarket, the impact was immediate. Before GPT-5's release, most forecasters saw OpenAI as the clear favorite in the race for the best model of the year. But after launch, the company's odds dropped sharply, with Google overtaking them in expectations. As a result, instead of strengthening its lead, the long-awaited release became a real test for OpenAI. The company gained millions of new users in the free tier, but lost part of its loyal audience, the ones who valued not just the model's intelligence, but its human touch. At the GPT-5 launch presentation, a major focus was placed on benchmark slides, comparison charts meant to clearly show how the new model outperformed its competitors. However, one of the key slides sparked confusion rather than excitement. The numbers and bars appeared to be arranged without any clear logic. Lower values were displayed as taller bars, higher values as shorter ones, and the visual scale didn't match the labels. On social media, it was quickly dubbed the strangest open AI chart ever, with some even speculating that it had been thrown together at the last minute without checking the accuracy of the data. The problem is that materials like this often form the public's first impression of a product. For a general audience unfamiliar with AI, the slide was supposed to serve as proof of GPT-5's unquestionable dominance, but instead it raised doubts. If such errors slipped into the presentation, how much can we trust the other claimed results? The situation was made worse by independent tests published by AI enthusiasts and researchers. On several popular benchmarks, such as S-Bench, which measures reasoning ability and common sense understanding, GPT-5 ranked only fifth, trailing behind Google's Gemini and even some older competitors. The gap wasn't massive, about 4 to 6% behind the leader. But for a product surrounded by months of hype, it looked like a letdown. Weaknesses were especially evident in complex logic and creative tasks requiring unconventional thinking. In these areas, GPT-5 fell behind not only Google but also Grok4 from XAI, a surprising outcome for those expecting OpenAI to reclaim the lead across all fronts. In the professional AI community, this sparked heated debates. Some argued that a small gap in test scores doesn't matter for the average user. Others saw it as a sign of a strategic shift at OpenAI, moving away from chasing narrow benchmark wins at all costs and towards scalability and stability for millions of users. Still, for the company's image as a technological leader, especially in the eyes of experts, the moment was a tangible blow. The shift in OpenAI's strategy has become evident not just in test results, but also in the overall style of the company's decisions in recent months. In the past, OpenAI seemed determined to prove at all costs that its model was the most powerful and smartest on the market. Now, the top priority appears to be scale and stability for the widest possible audience. Sam Altman has openly stated that, in a few years, the key metric won't be topping some niche benchmark. It will be reaching a billion daily active users. The logic is straightforward. Technological breakthroughs quickly lose their wow factor, but the daily habit of millions using your product builds long-term business resilience. That's why GPT-5 may have been designed from the start not as a record breaker, but as a universal tool capable of delivering the same stable performance for a student, a programmer, a journalist, and a business owner alike. This strategy comes with trade-offs. In pursuit of universality and predictability, OpenAI is deliberately smoothing out the model's personality. It's becoming more neutral, less emotional, and avoids excessive agreement or encouragement of questionable ideas. This approach reduces the risk of scandals caused by unpredictable answers and makes the product safer for corporate use, where too much AI creativity can backfire. But it's exactly this sterility that frustrates longtime ChatGPT fans. For them, earlier versions, especially GPT-4, were more than just a tool. They felt like a conversational partner that could not only help, but also inspire, share a laugh, or offer comfort in a difficult moment. GPT-5, on the other hand, feels more like a polite but detached assistant, focused on being correct rather than emotionally engaging. 
From a business perspective, prioritizing a mass market product might make sense. Millions of people who just want quick, reliable help aren't going to care about benchmark subtleties or personality nuances. But for the active community of AI enthusiasts and developers, the very people who helped build OpenAI's image as a clear technological leader, this shift feels like abandoning the ambition to be the smartest in favor of being the most convenient. In the end, GPT-5 has become a symbol of this transformation. From a bold research lab challenging the entire market to a mature company building a mass-scale, predictable, and commercially sustainable product, the question now isn't whether the model is intelligent enough. It's whether OpenAI can preserve that emotional connection with users that it seems willing to sacrifice for the sake of scaling. In expert circles, GPT-5 is discussed with caution and at times outright criticism. Developers and researchers are dissecting benchmarks, debating architectural changes, and questioning whether the model truly justified the massive marketing campaign that preceded it. To them, the release looks like a move toward compromise, where the ambition to build the best AI on the planet has given way to priorities like scaling and cost efficiency. Outside the professional sphere, however, the picture is very different. For a huge number of people, ChatGPT has long been synonymous with artificial intelligence. As recognizable a brand as Google is for search, or YouTube is for video, millions of users who don't follow technical details continue to rely on it for translations, advice, writing, and simple conversation. For this audience, GPT-5 is simply the new version of a trusted assistant, and they're unlikely to care about whether it lags competitors by a few percentage points in some benchmark. Still, one change has been noticed by everyone, both professionals and everyday users, a shift in the tone of conversation, where the model once often behaved like an engaged conversational partner, playing along with jokes, picking up on ideas, even bantering in a lighthearted way. It has now become noticeably more restrained. Responses are more formal, with less spontaneity and personality. For some, that's a plus, fewer chances of getting an odd or inappropriate answer. For others, it's the loss of that human feeling that made interacting with AI not only useful but also emotionally rewarding. And this, perhaps, is OpenAI's biggest risk. Most users can live with functional limitations or reduced request limits. Those are seen as technical necessities. But if the sense disappears that there's a living, understanding presence on the other side of the screen, the emotional bond disappears too. Without it, ChatGPT risks becoming just another convenient but faceless tool, one that can easily be replaced by a competitor offering just a bit more warmth in conversation. For a company betting on a billion daily active users, losing that connection could end up costing more than any drop in AI leaderboard rankings.